In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of define direct labor rate and efficiency variances and how they are used. If we see a discussion question or an essay question like this, we typically want to write more rather than less in an essay question. If we write more, we're more likely to touch on those areas that are looked for in order to give points. And if we write more than is expected, we're usually not penalized. So if we have the time, we may as well do it. In a discussion question, we're really usually looking to add more to a conversation that may already have been started. And therefore to do so, as long as we're writing relevant information, we wanna add information to it. Keeping that in mind, let's read this one more time. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Find direct labor rate and efficiency variances and how they are used. So if we go into this process, then we can obviously define the direct labor rate variance, the direct labor efficiency variance. We can also take a step back from that. We can say, well, what is variance analysis we can go into the process of variance analysis and how it fits into say budgeting and overarching planning so we can always take a step back and add more information to it if we so choose so we could say the direct labor and rate efficiency variances are going to be part of the variance analysis they're part of the process and planning process and then the comparing to actual and then the further planning process for a new budgetary process so the direct labor uh, rate and efficiency variances means that, in essence, we have set up a standard. We're going to have standards that we're going to set up and we're going to compare the standards, kind of like the budgeted numbers, to the actual numbers. Now, I would typically think of these variances in this format. First, we think of the line item for the, the direct labor, the, how we would compare it on a budgeted a budgeted income statement compared to the actual income statement in other words if we had a budget uh, a budget financial statement a budgeted income statement then the line item for direct labor would be one number we could then run what actually happened and we would have the line item for direct labor we can then take the difference between the budgeted number what actually happened that difference being the change we could say hey is this good or bad did we have more or less direct labor expense for the period than was budgeted for now that's great but we would then further want to break that number down because there's at least two components to it in other words it could be a rate variance or it could be an efficiency variance in other words that difference could be a result of us having different rates that we charge different wages different hourly rates than we had budgeted for actual versus budget or it could be a result of us having different number of hours that were worked than we actually budgeted for. So therefore, we need to take that one line item for the direct labor, break it out into those two components, which would be the rate variance and the efficiency variance. One geared towards the rate variance, geared towards the rate, how much we're, we're, uh, we're paying people on an hourly rate. We, in order to put together the budget or to put together the standards, we then came up with a standard rate and we want to say, okay, is our, is our standard rate in alignment with the budgeted rate? 
which is more or less and how much of that difference whatever that difference may be is a result or resulted in the difference in the line item for direct labor we then do the same thing for the number of hours we say okay how much did we pay people did we pay people more or i mean how many hours did we use the efficiency did we have more people work more hours to make the number of units than than we expected or less than we than we expected to make that same number of units and we see what component of the change is that and then we can and we could further ana analyze and break down what our decision making process will be from there you also might want to mention what the what the standard kind of result you would think would be in other words if, if you had better labor uh if you had more high quality labor you would think that you would pay more for higher quality labor and therefore you might have an unfavorable uh difference in terms of the rate if you paid more for the quality labor however the quality labor hopefully would then do things in less time because you're hired better workers so if you if you pay more in terms of the of the rate in terms of the rate variance you would think that the efficiency variance would be possibly a favorable uh, difference so in other words there, you would think that there would be some interplay between hiring better workers which you would think would be able to do by paying more having a higher rate and as you hire better workers then possibly your efficiency variance uh, the number of hours needed to work to make the number of units you would think would go down and the goal in terms of managerial accounting isn't just to hire really good workers for the efficiency the goal is to find where the optimal level is to be between the rate that you're paying people and how good of work that you're getting in terms of the efficiency and they're usually going to go in opposite directions you would think